This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. I want to say one more thing uh, about when I said Revelation. We're not going to be doing Revelation. I know some of you have already gone through Revelation. What was the last time we went through Revelation? We've had this discussion, what, last Sunday, four years ago, something like that. We're not going to be doing the same thing, but I am going to be doing uh, each Sunday kind of an update on what's happening in the world and kind of looking talking about what's going on in the world, comparing it with the Scripture, that sort of thing. So we'll be going through Revelation, but we will it will be kind of fresh, not kind of, it will be fresh and different every every Sunday, all right? And it's it's always a good, I think, especially in this day and time, it is a good thing to do, um, especially with, with the condition of the world and uh, the way things are going, and we expect things to, to just really accelerate at this point. All right. Uh, so we're in John. Oh, I need my notebook. John chapter 21, and we're um, or John chapter 20. As we finish up, we're looking at uh, verse 24 where we left off last Sunday. And if you'll recall, uh, Jesus had, he rose from the grave. Mary from Magdala, we call her Mary Magdalene, goes to the grave. She and a couple of other women go to the grave. They discover that Jesus is alive. Mary is the person who really talks to Jesus. She's, she's the first person to talk to Jesus after he's alive. And uh, uh, so Mary comes back and tells the disciples. And uh, the disciples now, they're in this, this room that night. Uh, they're in this room under lock and key uh, because they're hiding. Uh, and Jesus appears in the midst of them and shows them who he is and reveals himself to them. Thomas is not with a group at that time. We don't know where he was. Uh, but he was. Uh, he comes back, and uh, they tell him he's alive. And Thomas says, look, um, verse 24 says, Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with him when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. And he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark uh, of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. And eight days later now, for eight days now, Thomas has, he's, he's just had to deal with this. Uh, his disciples were in sight again, and Thomas was with them this time. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side, and don't, do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him, and he said, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now, as we saw last Sunday, these disciples are in this room. Uh, Thomas is such a skeptic, and he says, I've got to see something to to believe it. And um, notice that Jesus didn't chastise or reprimand uh, Thomas for doubting. There's no problem with doubting. I mean, now, if do- doubting controls you, then you've got an issue. But just because you doubt, doubting is not a sin. Uh, unbelief is a sin, but doubting is not a sin. Doubting is just simply saying, I've, there's something I've got to figure out here. Doubting is a way of, of determining. It's like a warning light on your dashboard. It's a way of saying, oh, there's something that needs to be checked out here. So if you're having some doubts about something, see it as a warning light. I've got to get something figured out. And go to the Word and discover the truth, whatever it is that you have to do to find out what the what the issue is. So Jesus didn't chastise or reprimand Thomas for doubting. In fact, Jesus made it a point to confirm the truth. Let me show you what that warning light, how to, how to fix that warning light issue is what he was saying. And that's one of the reasons that I tell you, when you think you know what God's will is or you're wondering what God's will is, let him confirm it. Let God confirm it. He does that. That's the way He works. If you're going through some issues in your life and you're trying to discover what God's will is for your life, let God confirm it. Wait on Him. You know, just just say, okay, I think this is what God wants me to do. Okay, God, how do you want me to proceed? How are you going to open the door? What it is, What is it that you want to do? And it's amazing how God does that over and over and over again. He, and He does it differently for all of us. He's not going to discipline you for doubting. He wants you to be sold out to His will. And so He's going to confirm that so that there's no doubt uh, as far as you're concerned. And by the way, He will do it, as I said, differently for each of us because we're all made up differently and God knows what it's going to take to convince you individually. And so when, the, when He confirms Himself to Thomas, 
Thomas responds and he realizes, that's it. You are real. You are alive. And he responds, my Lord and my God. And Jesus then says something that seems to contradict what I've just said. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. But that's not a contradiction at all. You see, you haven't seen Jesus physically, and yet you believe in him. Why? Because he has proven himself over and over to you. You don't need to see him to know that he's there. And what Jesus is saying here is that when you believe, even though you haven't seen Jesus physically the way Thomas did, you will be blessed. Blessed are those, blessed are those who believe, even though they haven't seen. God says, I'm going to bless you. Remember what a blessing is? The blessing is that which causes you to praise God. So what Jesus is saying is that he will continue to do things in your life that cause you to praise him because even though you have never seen him physically, you know he's real and he's alive. And because of the things that God continues to do in and through your life, you know God is real. So the fact that God is using you reveals the reality of Christ. And God says, because you believe, I will continue to bless you. And I will continue to bless you more and more. I, the last, I mean, last night, I, uh, something hit me that I had, that I'm dealing with right now in my own life. The discovery that God has continued to bless me. He's blessing me more now than he did a year ago. I look at what God's doing in my life and through my life, and I realize that He's doing more now than He was doing a year ago or two years ago or three years ago. He continues to bless. He continues to reveal Himself in my life. And as He does that, that's what this verse is saying. He's revealing His reality in my life. And I am believing Him. I'm believing in the reality of Christ. And as I do that, then God does more in my life that causes me to praise Him. That's how God works. And that's how He works in your life. So if you've got a little belief problem there, a little doubt problem going on in your life, then what you need to do is acknowledge the fact, God, I'm having a little issue here. I need for you to confirm your will and your way. Let him confirm it. Let him deal with a warning light on your dashboard. And then as he does that, then then he will begin to bless you because he will begin to reveal himself more and more in your life and more and more through your life. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.